Thank you very much, first of all, for having me uh, here. Well, having me here in Bordeaux, but thanks for uh, allowing this speech to be possible. So, like, um, like you said, my name is Marie Sarot Armenja. I'm a doctoral uh, candidate here uh, in Bordeaux Montaigne University. But today, uh, because my research is funded by the Public Office for the Occitan Language, and today I'm kind of uh, speaking from a, a slightly different standpoint, which is that of being the uh, scientific speaker for the institution, uh, although I, I can't put my uh, sociolinguistics brain <laughs> down, but uh, just so you know, I'm, I'm trying to something a bit different here. All right, so my presentation uh, will actually talk about the kind of the other end of education. We talked about uh, before school, I'm going to thank, talk about the end of school, high school students, uh, and present a project that we started last year, and we're hoping to continue this year um, to try to empower students, so high school students learning um, Occitan, and we wanted, well, yeah, so without further ado, because I tend to be quite talkative, just a few words about who we are. So the Public Office for the Occitan Language is a uh, an institution which is rather new. It was created in 2016. It's what we called un groupement d'intérêt public in French, which means that it's a complex uh, entity which is composed of the two administrative regions of Nouvelle-Aquitaine here. So that's that's Nouvelle-Aquitaine, Occitanie here, and the uh, the government, the state, is also part of uh, this interregional administration, which. Um, was created to um, implement interregional linguistic policies, and the main focus of this um, of uh, this uh, institution has been uh, the the young people, mostly schools. Uh, also, just so you know, we're going to see just after on the next slide. But uh, actually, there is no institution in France that covers the whole of the Occitan territory. So here is the Occitan territory. Um, which is approximately one third of France. Um, so, Occitan, what is it? So, here I wrote Kezako, which is uh, actually a. So, here you have the Occitan, the original Occitan uh, sentence, but uh, most of the French will write it like that because actually people use it as a French word but don't know it's actually a uh, an Occitan. Uh, f sentence, and I think that's that's quite representative of what people know or think about Occitan. Basically, they, a lot of people don't know that it exists. So, what is it? It's a Romance language that's spoken, like I said, in the south of France, but also uh, in Spain, uh, in Italy. Sorry, here, and it's also um, a co-official language here in Spain, in pa Spanish Catalonia. Um, and just as a as a reminder. Uh, there's no official status in France for regional lang for what we call regional languages or minority languages. Uh, they are inscribed in the constitution, but are rather far down in the articles that don't really matter. And uh, the article number two, the one that really matters, is the one that says that Fran French is the official language of France. Um, and also, just to uh, a quick reminder of the the history of the language, perhaps um, until this until the the, the French Revolution, Fran French was actually kind of a minority language in France. It was spoken mostly in the north of France and not by uh, everybody. There were a lot of languages spoken on the territory and from the revolution to uh, a bit afterwards the uh, Second World War, the, the language policy in France was literally to eradicate uh, regional languages. That was vocabulary that was um, that was used and it was quite efficient since nowadays those languages are very little spoken. Uh, we conducted a survey two years ago on our territory and uh, we found that approximately 7% of the local population in the southwest can speak at least a little bit of Occitan, can conduct at least a simple conversation. So that means that those 7% are not are actually not uh, completely bilingual people, only a small portion of them is. All right, so uh, first of all, the pro so the project I want to talk about, the uh, empowering high school students is actually part of a much larger project that uh, my colleagues uh, started to implement last year that we called the Plan d'Action Lycée, Action Plan for High School. Uh, so the starting point of this focus on high school specifically among all um, the uh, school levels is uh, that 
we started to think that uh, the high school is actually very important. The high school level is actually very important in the revitalization of the language because uh, we there is bilingual education that's accessible to a certain number of families. Occitan French have had. There's also uh, private immersion schools that exist where the whole schooling system is in Occitan, mostly for uh, primary schools. Um, and then the more you go up in levels, the the the, the less Occitan you usually find in schools. And so um, we know there's been a lot of studies that show that even when they are in an immersion school for the whole primary school, if they the students don't continue uh, actively learning Occitan at school in middle school and high school, for example, they usually don't reach um, a um, satisfactory. Uh, level of proficiency and they usually don't continue speaking it when they are uh, adults. So that's one of the problems we, want to, we wanted to tackle. So we think that uh, perhaps if we uh, ensure that the students keep learning and speaking Occitan until the end of high school, perhaps they will continue speaking it when they are adults. And also uh, we uh, work a lot with the National Education Ministry to uh, um, to educate people so that they can become Occitan teachers. But the fact is that if the people don't know how to speak Occitan when they reach university, they're not going to become Occitan teachers. So those were basically the two uh, starting points of this project. Uh, in 2018, there was a reform of high school and of the uh, living cert the French Living Certificate, the baccalaureate. Um, so this is just a, a visual that was created by the ministry to try to convince people that um, it was actually better after the reform for um, regional languages because you could actually gain more points if you took regional languages at the final exam. The problem is that it means you basically need to dedicate your whole education or almost to the regional language, which is not what students usually elect to do. And uh, what this reform really did was to put more competition, to create more competition between the different subjects. And so regional languages ended up being less elected by students in the end because they didn't, they wanted to have more useful uh, subjects. And so there was um, a decrease in the number of students and a lot of classes had to close so much so that that for these years baccalaureate, they had to uh, reevaluate actually the coefficient system. So that was a, a good point. But after three years of a, a very bad situation. Also, uh, last year, we had uh, the first law that was actually passed uh, under the current Republic, the fifth Republic of France uh, after the so since basically the Second World War uh, about regional languages. Um, so it, it was a, there was a big controversy about it. I'm not going to dive into this, but uh, the positive point is that technically this law provides a, a new legal framework for uh, extending uh, the teaching of regional languages in public education. So that creates a positive framework, even though it doesn't prom promise anything concrete about it. So our uh, action plan for high school, uh, so like I explained the context was that there are fewer people who and fewer students who enroll in Occitan in high school and but we now have a positive legal framework and there was also a high demand from teachers and par and some parents as well. Uh, so the objective of this action plan for high school, uh, which was devised for two school years from 2001 to 2003, was to increase high school student enrollment in Occitan classes. Uh, we selected two modes of action that we combined actually within this big action plan, which is first, which was first to um, identify and promote, publicize already existing projects that did target high school, but try to make them more visible, more useful as well, and also create new you know, uh, pro projects uh, and implement them during these two sc school years. There were three operational objectives. Uh, first, to equip students and teachers, then to raise awareness of the benefits of learning Occitan or regional languages in general among non-Occitan learners in middle school and high school, and also publicize already existing initiatives in school to encourage emulation. So the idea is that we have three operational objectives that don't target the same communities. Equip students and teachers means we want to equip people who are already speakers or at least learners of the language. So we target the community, the speaker community. And then raising awareness 
is something that targets the non-speakers, so, but they are the potential community. So that means we're going to target people in the area where Occitan is spoken to try to increase enrollments. And then the, um, the publicizing aspect targets both speakers and non-speakers. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, different, um, different targets for different objectives or types of action. So this is just to show you, this is the actually one of the, the documents we created in Occitan to try to show how those um, how those actions are organized together. And then this is just a working um, a uh, a working document, but so that we can see how we work. And the idea is that the project I want to talk to you about, the empowering high school students uh, project, is just here. Sorry, just here. So you can see the Lycée Ambassadors. So this is uh, Lycéens is high school student and Ambassadors is uh, Ambassador is uh, Ambassador. Uh, so the idea is that here you can see the objectives. It's this one. Uh, this project was ranked high priority because we had 16 different actions that we identified to be part of this action plan, and we weren't sure that we would be able to implement all of them at one time. So we had to prioritize and we decided that this was very high priority because it actually um, it actually did the three uh, um, three objectives at the same time so equip uh, raise awareness and publicize so that's uh, one why also it's one of the it's the um, the one uh, project I wanted to talk about so within this specific project uh, to be more precise um, when we talk about the goal of equip, it was mostly equip the teachers, provide them with a teaching opportunity, for example, uh, because um, the the high school students had to um, teacher to become uh, ambassadors. They were selected among uh, many students that uh, that uh, filled in an application. So that uh, the idea was that the teachers could use this opportunity to um, to do this as a class project or as a, a teaching opportunity around the idea of what does it mean to be an ambassador for Occitan and also perhaps they could write their applications in class, write them, they could write in Occitan or in French because they could apply with any level of Occitan, but that could be uh, an opportunity for teaching. Uh, raising awareness, so we wanted to raise awareness uh, among again two different categories of people, among non-Occitan learners, um, so the idea was that uh, with the call for applications, we send posters, flyers, etc. So the idea was to put this documentation in the high school so that it was visible, so that the project which targeted the speaking community, the learning community, could also be visible from uh, the non-learning community in the same high schools. And also raise awareness among Oxfam learners themselves um, that they, uh, as speakers, as learners, they have a responsibility in helping save the language. They have an acting role uh, of being an ambassador of Occitan in everyday life, and they could uh, do a little more perhaps by taking part in this project. And then publicize, um, another part of the project was to actually uh, put the ambassador, the, um, have the media talk about the ambassadors. We wanted to have portraits, for example, in the local press. And uh, we also wanted to see if this program could perhaps, it, it didn't work last year, we, we didn't have time to work on that, but maybe for next year, that's one of the one of the options we want to try to work on is that actually within the high schools there's already ambassadors for many things so here you have the eco delegue which are um, students who are elected to uh, think about the environment and uh, and um, sustainable aspects in the high school and then uh, we have also high school students who are elected to be part of a regional council of high school students etc and we thought that maybe we could try to have the same level of institutionalization for our ambassadors than other types of already institutional ambassadors so that we didn't re achieve this year but that's still a, a goal all right so um, then the missions for the ambassadors themselves, uh, th there were three main missions, three main things we expected of the ambassadors we selected. First, they would be, uh, they would represent Occitan and our institution as well. Um, so that means we wanted them to take part in the institutional communication and, uh, sorry, 
Then uh, we also wanted to ask their opinion about especially communication projects that we have like um, posters and flyers for different projects to see if they, you know, because it's very hard to know how to talk to high school students uh, to use the right language and the right pictures and the right amount of information, etc. So we uh, wanted them to consult on our projects actually to give their opinion. They could also propose um, slogans sometimes and things like that. So here it was a consulting uh, role and then uh, we also they were also supposed to brainstorm together a project of their own to raise awareness about Occitan at school. So here that was really the part that we considered as a way to empower the community. The idea was really to give uh, the possibility to those students to do whatever they want, whatever they wanted within the frame of what was possible uh, so that they could put in place their own project to try to raise awareness about Occitan. So the idea is that we, within these three missions, we had uh, different levels of institutionalization of the uh, student, high school students themselves. First, representing Occitan, representing uh, the institution that's literally being part of the top-down policy, like uh, just being used as a tool for the top-down policy. Then with the consulting role, uh, the idea was to include the target community, high school students learning Occitan in the frame, in the framing of top-down policies. So um, here they are, they have a more active role. And then uh, the, the third mission was really about the institutional, the institution, sorry, the institution providing the framework for their own bottom-up projects. So how did it work? Uh, well, we made a call for application and we selected nine ambassadors. Uh, we wanted, at first we wanted to have gender equality, but there were so many girls that uh, actually filled in a, an application that we, that we ended up having seven girls and two boys. They came from uh, the three forms of high school. So first year, second year, third year. Uh, also all learning, uh, Occitan learning modalities. So there were uh, students who had started learning Occitan actually that year, uh, and as uh, as well as students who had been learning it since uh, preschool actually uh, in immersive programs. So we really had kind of, uh, we wanted them to represent the diversity of situations of uh, Occitan students. And um, okay, so that's what I, I said. And we also wanted them to be representative of our whole territory, which is quite big and that ended up being an issue. I'll talk about it in a few seconds. So that's the, the territory. So that's where they came from. So me, I'm here in Bordeaux. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, you can see they were pretty much uh, spread everywhere on our territory. So what were the limits of our um, the limits of our uh, project? Well, uh, Clearly, there was um, we had some upstream calibration issues, which is that we were definitely too ambitious, and we had to cancel some of the actions, some of the the, yeah, the actions that we had planned for the high school students. Uh, originally, we wanted them to uh, meet together on site to brainstorm a project, and we had to do that online because it was absolutely impossible to gather them all together for one or two days because they came from very different. Uh, distant parts. Uh, we were not very, um, we didn't have actually time to um, to make a good liaison with the media. So I, I think only two portraits actually went out in the press and uh, we weren't able to publicize all the uh, students in the end. So like I said, the size of the territory was definitely a problem that we did not really anticipate. Um, and there was also the problem of keeping the ambassadors motivated, even though that's uh, that's um, not just a, a limit because they actually work. They expressed motivation, but in the end, when it comes to having them actually do some work, it could be a, a little hard. Um, and we definitely need to find the right balance between the top-down uh, policy and the bottom-up energy. So the idea is that uh, us as an institution, we have, you know, 
uh, it takes time to put up projects. We need to consult a lot of people. There's very little flexibility with the budget, with the timing once the project is uh, is validated. And when it comes to the students, especially high school students, what they want is to be spontaneous, to experiment. Uh, they want some liberty. They want immediacy uh, to feel concrete progress. And that's probably where we lost them with the motivation. So we kind of need to find the right balance. That was one of our conclusions after one year of running the program. We did have some positive outcomes. So first of all, uh, when I said the ambassadors were motivated, we created a WhatsApp group so that they could communicate together and with us. And they actually were quite active on the group. So they did talk and sometimes they even in initiated talk between themselves without us. So that was actually quite good. They were full of ideas. Um, and uh, in the end, because uh, like I said, we had difficulties getting them all on one side. And so then we were wondering if we would uh, really ask them to brainstorm a project. So we hadn't really uh, told them again about that. And it actually came from a spontaneous discussion. At some point, one of the students said, hey, weren't we supposed to propose projects? When do we do that? And then another one, I didn't have time to respond. And another one said, well, you can do that whenever you want. Just uh, just give you just give us an idea and uh, the students said, well, I was thinking we could perhaps uh, make videos that would present the territory where we live so that we show uh, how Occitan helps us understand the territory better and so on. So this is just still a work in progress, but uh, really it was a very spontaneous uh, project that shows that uh, they were still quite motivated in the end. Uh, quickly, we had some unforeseen positive outcomes. Actually, we had no idea how many students would uh, would send an application. We had 59, which was much more than we expected. We frankly, we expected to receive like 10. So the problem is we had to turn down a lot of people, but that showed that there was a strong demand from the teachers and also from the students themselves. Um, I showed you that the ambassadors were really from different parts of Occitan, of, uh, of the Occitan territory, and they also speak different dialects, different varieties, but still they really felt united through language. And that was something that it's not that we didn't anticipate it, but it was very uh, heartening to see this uh, this feeling of a community, even though they were very far away and never met in person. And also, uh, we had two of the ambassadors who actually sent us um, spontaneous uh, applications for an internship and for uh, a uh, post high school work study training program. So unfortunately, we weren't able to provide them with working opportunities within our institution. But it was actually a nice surprise to see that uh, they were so pleased with the program and they thought that it was an opportunity for them to find perhaps a job or uh, a working opportunity. So that was also something we didn't expect, but were quite pleased with. Um, all right. I think uh, I'm being too long here, so I'm, I'll try to be very quick. Also, unfortunately, positive outcomes was that actually in the applications, uh, we could see actually what the students' representations of Occitan were, what aspirations, projects they have, even they had, even though they weren't necessarily able to implement them or even to be selected. So basically, this, the high school students are motivated. And uh, what they say basically is that Occitan is a link for them with their family, especially with their grandparents or a way to talk to the elderly in general, that it leads to open mindedness. And it's a doorway to other languages, especially because it's a romance language that so they do say a lot that it helps learning Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, etc. And they also showed uh, a very strong interest for local heritage, history and culture. Uh, they often use the words my region, my city, my town. And that actually goes against some of the uh, advice we got from people from the Ministry of Education who had said that they didn't want the project to be about heritage. They wanted it to, ba to be about everyday life and the future, basically the high school students life. But they themselves went back to the heritage. So that's something we found interesting. So here I had a few um, a few of the. Um, of the of the sentences they wrote in their applications like uh, uh, first I decided to learn the language to discover a new language that that of our region but also for the history the culture that we don't learn in our history classes so also a way to yeah clearly learn something that is missing from the curriculum uh, the second reason is to talk with my grandfather uh, another one wrote in my opinion Occitan just like all the other regional languages is part of our national culture and uh, that is 
it is important to learn about that part in order to understand our history better. So again, something that's missing from the national curriculum, in, a, in their opinion, in a more detailed way. The history of our territories, but also our language in general, French. Another one said, I learned Occitan to open up to my region and know more about Occitan culture. I also think that regional languages are an important part of French culture and that it is necessary to dis not to disregard them. And finally, I studied because it's a language of interaction with the elders. It allows to tell history with a capital H, uh, but also the little history, that of our local culture. Um, this student was very, very thorough, so talked about etymology, unraveling the secrets of topology, understanding many uh, expressions of the everyday life. So they do have a conscience of a, a linguistic conscience, which is quite uh, thorough sometimes. All right, so basically, to conclude very quickly, we had very quite mixed results because, like I said, we were two ambitions and we had to revise the, the, our goal downwards. Um, the project basically was too focused, like nine students, but on a too large a scale. Um, but still, there's strong demand for renewal of the project. So what we think we can do to, um, to do better next year is to really uh, brainstorm again and decide where we're really efficient to to pinpoint where we're really efficient as an institution, uh, where we need it as well. Um, but also we need to give more power to the students themselves. We perhaps we try to keep too much control. The problem is that France is a very centralized country with a very strong centralizing tradition, which is very, very top down, uh, especially in education and kind of goes against bottom up philosophy. So we maybe have a little, we have a hard time like allowing local projects to emerge, but that's kind of a tendency that the ministry is trying to develop. So that's something that we want to focus on. So uh, what we want to do for next year, for this year, this coming year, is perhaps to involve more students uh, so that there are more ambassadors in the high schools and so that we can root the project in the schools locally to encourage projects developed on a local scale in link, link with the territory, but that would have less oversight from us, but just a, a strong framework. I'm not sure if that's very clear, uh, but uh, I've talked too, lo too much already. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope that was clear. Um, yeah, so thank you. And I, I just want to say that uh, earlier, I, I think I couldn't hear very, very well when questions were asked in the in uh, on site. And because English is not my first language, I guess there is also sometimes the problem with uh, when I can't hear very well with the microphone or whatever, but I'll try to answer any question you have if you have them. Thank you.